you are given exactly 60 seconds to answer this question. If you're done with your answers, you can skip the timer and proceed to the discussion portion to verify whether your answers are correct or not. If you may, you can share your answers as a comment in the comment section below. If you need more time, you can pause this video in any moment you want. Your 60 seconds starts now. Similar to our previous video, we're able to understand and analyze the location of our terminal points of specific arcs. Now, again, the importance of determining the correct quadrants to which the terminal points of the arcs is uh, falling into will greatly help us understand the differences of the coordinates. Because if we, if we talk about um, special arcs like over 3, over 6, over 4, the coordinates or the figures of the coordinates are just the same. They just differ on the signs depending on the location of the quadrant. However, in the previous video, all of our arcs are in positive value. This time, our arcs here are expressed in negative values. So let's try to consider this given unit circle here. The entire revolution of this circle starting from here is 360 degrees as we move from there to that as we we already know that sorry for my it's not accurate but uh, as we uh, revolve or move along the arcs and we make one uh, movement or one re or revolution this equal to 360 degrees okay so 360 degrees let's try to use this idea and show its equivalent region measure in terms of pi so that we could really relate as to our uh, given arcs here because they're all expressed in terms of pi we can convert 360 degrees into because this is a degree measurement which is also correct for arcs and angles we're, but we're going to convert it the region measurement using this conversion factor we have here pi over 180 degrees okay we know that it's correct because you will be having pi as you cancel the degrees here the result here would be pi and of course 360 divided by 180 is 2 that would mean our 360 degrees in terms of pi regions is just 2 pi so entire movement here is 2 pi and take note that if we talk about positive arcs we're moving counterclockwise from this origin so this is the movement of our positive arcs from counterclockwise following the uh, movement of our quadrants one two three and four but since our movement our arcs here are uh, negatives we're going to move it uh, clockwise but of course just after this since this entire movement of 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi half of which until here is just equal to half of 2 pi or pi regardless of whether you're moving counterclockwise or clockwise it's just equal to pi and let's illustrate the idea of all of this using this idea of pi so let's start with pi or sorry negative pi over 6 if it's just pi over 6, just like what we did in the previous video, we simply divide this pi into 6 parts. So, divide by 2, divide by like that, like that here as well. 
So we are dividing pi, our semicircle, into six parts or six regions. One, two, three, four, five, six. But then again, it's negative pi over six. As mentioned, if it's negative, the movement will be clockwise. Take note of that. It's very important because the location of quadrant will tell us a lot about the uh, coordinates of our terminal point. So pi over 6 will be, or negative, since it's negative, we're going to use this movement here, the clockwise movement. In short, let's use this portion here. Let's divide this into 6, hopefully equal parts here. Just like that, our pi is divided into six parts one two three four five six though it's not the same as here it's not balanced but uh hopefully uh it's okay until here right like, like that so we have this is our first pi over six but negative this is our second negative pi over six this is our third negative pi over six our fourth negative pi over six our fifth negative pi over six and our sixth negative pi over 6. Of course, this was pi earlier, but when you move to that, this is actually our negative pi when moving counterclockwise. And take note, our sixth negative pi over 6 is at the semicircle itself, negative pi. But we're looking at the location of negative pi over 6. It's just 1. So this is the negative pi over 6 here. So in positive, this is where we locate pi over 6, but it's negative, so this is where we, lo we can locate our negative pi over 6. Hence, our negative pi over 6 will be at qu uh, quadrant number 4. The reason for this is as well as looking into the signs, because over 6 arcs have the same figures. They, do, they just differ on the signs. And since our negative pi over 6 is on the 4th quadrant, the sign of x and y of all the points that can be found in the 4th quadrant will also take charge. Okay? Let's proceed to negative 2 pi over 3. So, uh, 6 and 3 are just multiples. So, this is divided by 3. Like that. So, our pi or negative pi is divided into 3. So, we have here 1. We have 2. And we have 3 here. Okay? So that's 1, 2, and 3. So we have divided it into 3 parts. But we have negative 2 pi over 3. So this is our first negative pi. This is our second negative pi. And that's a pi over 3. And therefore, this point is the point, the terminal point for our negative 2 pi over 3. So our negative 2 pi over 3 is located at the third quadrant okay because we have the first negative pi over 3 here and the second negative pi over 3 because our negative pi was divided into three parts okay now let's proceed to negative 5 pi fourths in short our negative pi will be divided into four parts let's use another figure here a unit circle as mentioned, this is pi, if we talk about the positive movement, or this could also stand for our negative pi, okay? This portion here. So this pi here, from here to there, negative pi, divide to four parts. So we have this divide, like that, and here. So we have one, two, three, and four parts. But how many movements do we have? Neg 5. So we have first negative pi fourths, second negative 5 pi, pi fourths, the third uh, negative pi fourths, the fourth negative pi fourths. But since we still need more, so we increase on the second or the upper portion. Okay? Like that. So again, the first negative pi fourths, second negative pi fourths, the third negative pi fourths. Fourth negative pi fourths or negative because we have negative uh, the fourth negative pi fourths is just negative pi, right? So next here, this is our fifth negative pi fourths or negative five pi over four that's actually located on the second quadrant. Okay? Because if you talk about positive, let's say if it's positive five pi fourths, it would be on the third quadrant. But since we're moving on the other direction, it's on the second quadrant. 
Let's proceed to negative pi halves. This is our pi again earlier. This was our pi. And just simply divide it into two parts. So this is our division. And we only need one movement. So this is our negative pi halves. One movement only. However, our terminal point is not located on any quadrant. And uh, more importantly, it's located on an axis. We call, more specifically, our y-axis. At this time, our point here has, has integral values. You might want to review on that what's the specific value for this here. But pi halves, uh, 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 along with all other multiples, are not located on any quadrant, but it's on a y-axis here, and probably for other cases as well. Finally, for our negative pi, already answered, we have already here. Again, it's a sa the same as negative pi halves. It's not found on any uh, quadrants, but it's specifically on an axis, x-axis. So the point here will also have integral values. So again, the purpose of identifying the terminal points is for us to understand or to get, uh, properly guess the coordinates because it's not enough for us to memorize pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 4, and all their multiples. But we also need to understand the location of each terminal point so that we could implement the correct signs. We might have uh, separate videos for that after this. But then again, as a reminder, we're moving clockwise in this case because all of our arcs here are negative. But in the previous video, we're moving counterclockwise because they're all positive. That's also one thing you need to be reminded of. Thank you for watching.